Okay, here we go. How is it going so far? What's your feeling huh? about the course? How are you feeling? Are we answering your questions or are we matching your expectations or are we even giving, creating <laughs> new ones? Um, so here in front of us, we are approaching analysis to follow module. Okay, I promise this one. Helen analysis techniques. This is a cool one. So the following lectures describe some of the main electronic intelligence capability in a visual or illustrative, I would say, way such as signal identific identification, classification, direction finding, geolocation of our enemies, and ultimately how to jump, how to disrupt our adversary alien system. Okay, isn't it cool? Sounds good. So relax and just grab your notebook, coffee, and let's get started. Okay, so let me ask you guys two questions. Can you tell me how or what is the strategy needed in order to identify and classify detected or intercepted electronic signals? And if so, how do I know where are these signals coming from? Is the term geolocation familiar to you? Yes, no? Okay, so let's break it down. Firstly, when it comes to classification, we consider electrical parameters such as frequency, modulation, pulse width, pulse repetition, interval, or a CV classification. Remember, signal classification is typically a confidential topic okay each mission each equipment each country or troop could have different parameters and requirements to match okay so keep that in mind um, this is the industry we work on the classification process is defined as follow each electrical parameter is matched with its corresponding parameter from a known database Okay, generating in this way a primary and secondary emitter parameter score. Okay, so we basically take our intercepted signal and we compare it to our known and also classified database. And then this matching process gives us a score. If the total score exceeds a selected threshold, so-called confidential level, confidence level, sorry, the meter can be considered a likely identified from our emitter database. Okay, so we need to make sure that the score is above, exceeds, obviously, a threshold. Obtaining signals families such as radar signals. Identify radar system by their unique characteristic. If we move to communication signals, we can differentiate between voice and data transmission. Regarding navigation signals, we can recognize signals using used for navigation and positioning. Okay, this is a little bit the, the kind of families we can distinguish signals from. Um, okay, but now how do you match signals to our database? How do how is this matching process done? Well, that's a great question. For that purpose, several techniques have been developed. Listed below just some examples. Okay, so first, firstly, we have signature analysis. What is this about? We analyze signals patterns and characteristics. Simple, simple. Uh, the second one is fingerprinting. With this, we create unique, unique profiles for known signals, database, confidential data, mission recordings. Third, we have machine learning. So in this case, we, we, we employ, we use, we make use of AI algorithm for automated classification, okay? And just a quick remark here, be aware that nowadays a mix up of all these technologies being used okay so the more processing power the more fun i would say 
Okay guys, so let's try to um, illustrate a little bit what we just discussed. For that we have um, four big photos here and a schematic. Let's start with the top left. Um, yeah, basically here we have a naval ship environment uh, detecting some radar emissions. Okay, this ship we are assuming that is um, ESM or alien capable. And you can clearly see an operator in front of a console, alien ESM console. And actually this process, uh, the output of the alien system is to provide the capability to the operator to identify and also to generate at the end of the process, obviously, a report in this way. Um, you can see here the example, the specify, specific rate up, blah, 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 serial number, wow, amazing, even the serial number. Um, the report is also including the specific platform, uh, the type of picture. This is basically what we said before about matching our intercepted signal to our known database, okay? Okay, now top right here is just a quick schematic, a quick architecture, but um, detailed enough. Yeah, this is basically, we can use this as a alien a architecture, as an alien reference, or even a combing, I would say, communication intelligence, since we have an antenna array. This can be dipole, this can be horn, this can be blade antennas, there are so many type of sensor that we can use as a array, then arrays for this kind of uh, interception. And the key is to see here there is a um, big unit, so-called direction finding, direction finding unit. Okay, so for that obviously you need a array as antennas for to, to, to as we explained before, if I remember correctly. I know we will explain later. I'm sorry, we will explain later direction finding techniques and you will understand why uh, we need antenna arrays with different um, position, with different locations. Okay, you will understand that later. But just to, yeah, as a quick introduction, you will always need antenna arrays, you will always need the direction finding unit or modules, and you will need a central computer, okay, as well dealing with uh, calibration signals, processing units. RF preamps, um, then there is a big bus of uh, data bus that you see raw data. Um, you can see the operator computer. You can see what we mentioned before: libraries, confidential data, and also recordings. Okay, all of that always align as well with the GPS receiver. Okay. Um, so it's, yeah, it's quite simple, but quite detailed, this schematic. Okay, guys, so what about the score? What about the threshold we just mentioned, concept we just mentioned before? Here, bottom left, you have two examples, two pulses, okay? This is two intercepted pulses. Obviously, the one on the left, it's a slightly more deteriorated compared to the right one. Could be in, uh, interferences, it could be losses, could be so many things. Um, but the important thing here to check is the threshold. You see these lines? These lines are mainly defining our threshold. So if the intercepted signal is exceeding these lines, we will automatically give a higher score, which means that the intercepted signal are likely to be already part of our database. Okay, it would be a known signal. This is just an example to illustrate the, the previously mentioned concept. Okay, and last but not least, we have here a cool table and uh, like a sonar, like a radar. A screenshot okay so starting from the table typically this is what you what the operator will, will see 
or will be shown on its console. You have a list of emitters with different modes, with different durations, okay? You see the confidence level, so that means the score, okay, out of our threshold matching. You can also find the RF type, the RF level, the pulse repetition interval, okay? And obviously, it's always displayed on a 360 uh, field of view. So you can see all the meters with respect to our ESM position. And um, yeah, nothing else to say. This is a typical emitter list, emitter track, emitter software provided by the Elink system.